Mmm, that's nice. Hi, today I would like to talk a little bit about Avid's Media Composer's Match Frame feature. Avid's Match Frame looks literally like a frame icon, and you can see I have it mapped right here directly in my timeline buttons. I also have it mapped under the source monitor. Now, depending whether I'm using this button under the source monitor or in the timeline, it behaves differently. For example, here I am parked over this clip. Now, if I want to find out, well, what else do I have on this shot outside of what I'm currently using in my timeline, then I can use the timeline match frame. And when I press it, it's going to go back to the bin, find this shot, load it into the source monitor so that I can see the entire length of the shot. Not just, of course, what I'm using in my timeline, but the complete shot itself. Plus, it also marks an in for me, uh, which is the same frame that I'm parked on in my timeline. Now, sometimes this is useful and sometimes this is not so useful, especially if I've already used parts of this shot and I want to see those ins and out marks still on the clip. A great way to ensure that your mark in and mark out stay on the clip is to hold down the option key as you press match frame. So for example, let's say I already have used parts of this shot and therefore I have a mark in and mark out located on the shot. Now when I press match frame without holding the option key, Take a look at the mark in and mark outs on the clip. You can see those are deleted and a new mark in is added to the match frame. Let me go and do that again. So I'm going to mark it in, mark it out. But this time I'm going to press the option key, hold down the option key as I press the match frame and you'll notice that the mark in and mark out stay this time and just simply the playhead moves to the match frame without marking an in. Match frame works by matching to the clip on the highest selected track in your timeline. So for example, if I place my playhead earlier in this clip and press match frame, it will match to the current frame that I'm parked on because there's nothing currently on video two. However, if I place my playhead a little bit down over the clip on video two, now when I press match frame, it's going to match to this clip because this is on the highest selected track. In the same way, if I would like to match frame to the audio on the audio track, I would need to deselect the higher tracks and now when I press match frame, it's matching to the audio on A3 and A4 and not to my video tracks. As I mentioned at the beginning of this tutorial, match frame is also located under the source monitor. I use match frame under the source monitor if I have a subclip loaded into the source monitor. So here in my bin, I have a subclip. I'm going to double click on it and we can see if I go to the very beginning of this subclip, we can see this is the frame that that shot starts on. Now, if I were to press match frame here, once I'm on a subclip, it's going to take me back to the original clip, what I like to call the parent clip. This is useful if I want to go back to the parent clip to see what else was on the original clip that the subclip came from. So those are a couple of useful features of Match Frame. Just to recap, Match Frame in the timeline works according to the highest selected track. And if I don't hold down the option key, we'll clear any pre-existing mark in or mark outs that exist on the clip. Unless before I press Match Frame, I hold down the option key. In that case, it will keep the pre-existing mark in and mark outs and just simply move your playhead in the source monitor to the match frame. Match frame in the source monitor 
is mostly useful if you have a subclip in your monitor and you want to quickly get back to the master clip or the parent clip, then the match frame in the source monitor is very useful for that. This is Janet from Manhattan Edit Workshop. Thank you for listening.